This, this video, video is not intended, intended for, for children. children. Hello, everyone. Our topic this week was requested by Tuberod the Pirate Tuber. We'll be going over Gazkul from the Warhammer 40k franchise. To start with, Gazkul Mag Uruk Thraka is the war boss of the 40k orcs. We highly suggest checking out our previous video on the orcs here for everything in this video to be clearer, but we'll explain the important bits as we go. Gazkul began his life as an otherwise unimpressive orc warrior. However, during a skirmish on his home planet, a not inconsiderable section of his skull and brain were blasted away. This sort of wound is hardly fatal for an orc, however, and he was dragged back to one of the mad scientists his people call doctors, who promptly bolted an adamantium plate to his head to make up for the lost skull bone and threw in some cyber whatsits and such to make everything operate. Mostly correctly. This is when the rise of Gazkul began. This process of skull repair awakened Gazkul's latent psyker abilities. Psykers are basically 40k mages slash mentalists. After which, the young orc claimed that he was receiving visions from Gork and Mork, the orc gods themselves, and he declared himself their prophet. It's worth noting that, with one likely exception, decades later, we're never shown any definitive proof for or against Gazkul's status as a prophet of the gods. But he thinks so, and his boys think so, and let's face it, with orcs, that's all it really takes. Over the next six years, Gaskill united all of the disparate orc clans on his homeworld under his banner, having crushed many of the previous orc leaders under his boot and intimidated the rest into working under him, as is the orcish way to lead. They began building space vessels in order to take their great wog across the stars in search of conquest. Wog is simultaneously the term for a big orcish crusade and the army that follows that crusade. Unfortunately, right around then, their sun began to die, and the orcs were never going to make it off-world before their star gave out. However, the first of many seeming moments of divine intervention occurred then, when a great Space Hulk fell out of the warp near their planet. Space Hulk is a generic 40k term for some manner of vaguely space-worthy debris or ship matter. It can be anything from a single massive dreadnought to a collection of smaller ships all squished together that through time and exposure to the warp have fused into one vaguely homogenous hulk. The common denominator is that space hulks are generally some kind of derelict ship or ships that have been sucked into and spat out of the warp a time or three. The problem this creates is that most space hulks are resultantly infested with traps, tyranids, demons, or all of the above and more. Thing is, Orcs don't just love battle, they literally live for it. They thrive on it. Orcs that survive skirmish after skirmish are actually more healthy and fit than those who have seen only a firefight or two. It's part of what makes them what they are. So, Gaskell and his orcs happily sailed and mass up into the Space Hulk, shattering their way through its previous occupants and patching up the wreck as best they could. And before you know it, the Space Hulk was thrown into the warp again, taking the hapless orcs off to start their crusade with just enough warp weirdness going on shipside to keep itchy orcish stringer fingers happy. When eventually the Space Hulk fell out of the warp again, it was on a collision course for the planet Armageddon. And yes, believe it or not, that was the planet's name before the mess that Gazkul was about to unleash. Imagine what must have happened there before this. The ship crashed onto the planet's primary continent and the orcs poured out, ready to conquer everything in their path. This is where the true danger that is Gazkul was revealed. Orc wogs, like the one Gazkul seemed about to unleash, weren't uncommon. Periodically, orcs would get rowdy and go crusading across the stars in search of a good fight. The Imperium, to whom this star system belonged, was used to this. What's more, Armageddon was heavily fortified, both as a world and a system. As it was, still is, a major manufacturing hub. But most orcs take the Zerg Rush approach, maul the enemies in mass with overwhelming numbers and savagery. What the humans would realize almost too late was that Gazkul actually employed strategy, and more importantly, was good at bullying his commanders into doing the same. Gazkul conducts war with all the savage ferocity you expect from orcs with a healthy dose of surprisingly sound tactical doctrine thrown in, and he learns from his mistakes. The orcs nearly took the planet before the Imperium's reinforcements arrived and routed the orcish forces. 
But this too was a learning experience for Gazkul. He took his closest guard and fled, hurtling off into space to gather more troops and prepare for a second assault. He led the Imperium's forces on a wild goose chase for some time in doing so, before finally capturing one of their leaders and making good their escape. The leader in question was one Commissar Yarik, one of the only humans to inspire respect and fear in orcs. A reputation he earned by being the most skilled, ruthless, and tenacious commander the orcs fought on Armageddon. Which is why he led the charge to catch Gazkul after the orcs left. He'd seen firsthand how dangerous the orc war boss was. After allowing Yarik to prove his battle prowess several times, Gazkul finally put him on a ship and sent him back to Armageddon, telling him that as the only human there worth fighting, it was his job to prepare the planet for Gazkul's second assault. Several decades later, after amassing an army many times the size of his previous forces and leading small test skirmishes against various smaller targets to try out new tactical approaches, Gazkul launched his second WAAAAG upon Armageddon. What followed was war incarnate. Gazkul had come up with countermeasures for every feat that had bested him previously. His orcs were well trained. He rained hollowed out meteor fortresses down on the planet to support his troops. He coordinated counterstrikes with teleportation technology, and it was all delivered with that trademark orcish ferocity and might for which any WAAAG was known. The Imperium was not to be bested, however. Commanders such as Yarek were now aware of the danger Gaskell's forces posed. They'd prepared. Armageddon was better defended than ever. Reinforcements were called for the moment Gaskell touched down. True war raged across the entire sector, neither side giving an inch. Now, orcs can sense the energy generated by other orcs in a wag, which meant that as this clash grew, it drew more orcish reinforcements as well. At some point, the swell of battle reached a stage that meant it was now essentially self-sustaining. The Imperium couldn't afford to give up the sector, so they would keep sending it reinforcements, and the orcs had an endlessly flowing and growing supply of reinforcements of their own. It was at this point that Gazkill began receiving visions, unclear though they were, that his place was elsewhere, that his work here was done. So, leaving his generals in command, Gazkill set off into space. He was pursued once again, the humans determined not to let him escape a second time, and indeed, that might have been the end for Gazkul, had it not been for a pivotal moment that points toward Gazkul definitively being the prophet of Gork and Mork. Gazkul's ship had been hammered apart and was about to be boarded. Gazkul had gathered a number of his psychers to the bridge in order to try and make sense of his visions, to no avail. But then, in that moment of need, green psyker energy erupted from all of his psychers, blasting a wave of energy into space that disrupted his pursuer systems and shouted in the voices he recognized as Gork and Mork, to all orcs present on his ship, that this was not their time to die. That it was Gazkul's purpose to bring about the end war. A perfect, all-consuming war that ravages the entire galaxy. A wog so great and terrible that Gork and Mork themselves would be summoned into real space. With that proclamation heard by all the orcs aboard, Gazkul's ship vanished, pulled through the warp to appear in the middle of a massive fleet led by another orc, seemingly placed there by the hands of the orc gods themselves. Gazkul wasted no time, he teleported to the lead orc's ship, beating him into unconsciousness and taking control of the fleet. Again, as orcs do, with the battered commander joining him upon waking. Gazkul took the new fleet and began amassing yet another WAG, clear now in his mission to spread WAG across the stars. He was eventually drawn to Octarius, sensing the conflict there. Octarius was a wonderful little corner of the galaxy that was being overrun with Tyranids. Even the local orcs were losing, until Gazkul showed up and kicked most of that hive fleet off the planet. Afterwards, the High Fleet returned in force, and the Orcs and Tyranids proceeded to create the galaxy's most efficient meat grinder. As the two species in the Milky Way galaxy most suited to prolonged wars settled in and just started punishing each other, consuming the whole system in yet another titanic and eventually self-sustaining battle, much like the WAG raging back in Armageddon. Gazkull left once again, determined to call more Orcs to the banner of his great WAG. His story has sat at that point for the last little while, 
with Gazkul having gathered a truly massive army, five million orcs strong, which he's preparing to drop on someone, somewhere soon. But recently, the 40k developers released a sexy new miniature for Gazkul that goes along with the storyline they'll be releasing soon called Psychic Awakening. With everything else going on in the galaxy, one of the Imperium's legions of space marines took it upon themselves to take out Gazkul for good. And they did a pretty decent job, with the head of the legion facing Gazkul in single combat, where they both killed each other. Thing is, the space marine in question got revived by being put through one of those well, this will make him better or kill him scenarios. Since he was already dead, there was no risk, and hey, look at that, now he's back and meaner than ever. On Gazkul's end, he'd been beheaded, but that's hardly lethal for an orc with a decent mad scientist around. If you think we're joking, look it up. So Gaz's head was put back on, and his body was souped up too, because why not? Now they're both ready for a rematch, and Gazkul just needs to start a few more endless wars before he can get that eternal wog going. And that's basically Gazkul, leader of the great wog of the 40k franchise. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave us a like and maybe share it with someone you know might like it. If you have ideas for videos you'd like to see in the future, do like Tube Marad the Pirate Tuber and let us know in the comments down below. If you'd like to see more videos from us in the future, be they lore, let's play, or other, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. In the meantime, this has been True, True Masters, Masters and Morons, and Morons signing, signing off. off. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to see more like it, hit that subscribe orb. To see our last Let's Play, click or tap the link on the right. For our last lore video, click the link on the left. Thank you to all of our patrons for making these videos possible. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching, watching, and, and we'll, we'll see, see you next time. time.